Hello, this is Jason with MathTutorDVD.com. We're going to continue talking about graphing features of the TI-89 calculator, and we're going to talk here in this section about graphing trigonometric functions, functions that involve sine, cosine, tangent, etc. And uh, those are things that you're going to be doing constantly uh, with this calculator, graphing trig functions. So it's probably a good idea to talk in some detail about it. Uh, you know, first thing you want to do, just to sort of get into the section, make sure you're in function mode, which you set in the mode menu. You should be most of the time. And for now, let's go ahead and keep ourselves in radian mode. Because most in engineering science classes, you're going to be dealing in radians. I'll show you how to switch it over to degrees and graph in degrees also. For now, let's stick with radians. Go ahead and go into the y equals menu. And at first glance, graphing a trig function is really no different than graphing a, a regular algebra function. There's nothing fancy here, um, but there are a few gotchas. So let me go ahead and put sine on the stack, and we'll put sine of x, and we'll close the parentheses. That's probably the most simple um, trig function that we can just graph. So let's go ahead and put enter there. And so we're ready to graph it. And default zoom on the, uh, on the guy there. Uh, we can check that out by going to the window menu. We've got default zoom going here, negative 10 to 10. Uh, let's go ahead and graph the sine function and see what the calculator does. So it's doing what we expect it to do. It's graphing a nice little sine wave. It is kind of squished. It's not very tall, but that's because the default um, range for the, for the y-axis is plus 10, minus 10. And, and as you know, sine only goes up to plus and minus 1. So that's the reason for that. Uh, but more or less it looks like a sign. It crosses through the origin here in the right manner. It's going up and down. So it's doing what we, what we want it to do. But it, it leaves a little bit to des uh, a little bit um, leaves something to be desired here because although it is graphing along the range that we have and, and, and uh, along the window that we, ha that we have specified, which is the default window plus minus 10 on the x-axis and on the y-axis, and you can trace it. You can go into F3 and you can trace it. I mean, you can definitely get some values here. You can zoom in and everything else. I mean, it works just fine. The only thing about it is that a lot of times when you're graphing trig functions, uh, you see the tick marks here for the x-axis, because they're, pl they're plus minus 10, this is a value of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So literally, this tick mark here, this is 1 radian, 2 radians, 3 radians, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 radians. That's what the x-axis is, and here's the negative radians. But a lot of times when we're doing trig, uh, trigonometry and calculus, we really want to look at the, uh, the tick marks in terms of, of multiples of pi. In other words, you probably, when you graph this by hand, you probably put a tick mark at pi over 2, probably put another tick mark at 2 pi over 2, which is pi, 3 pi over 2, 4 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2, because those are the, the anchor values that we have memorized what the sine cosine functions are equal to. So a lot of times when you're, when you're doing that, and those are also the quadrants of the unit circle, uh, pi over 2 being up here, if you think of this as a unit circle, pi over 2 over here, pi, 3 pi over 2, 4 pi over 2 over here, which is just 2 pi. So it's very convenient to have those tick marks there. So it's yeah, the graph looks like a sign, and you can trace it, and for everyday purposes, it's probably fine. But there is something nice the calculator will let you do to make it look prettier. Just go into the Zoom menu here, and number seven is Zoom Trig. Just hit number seven, and let's see what happens. So the graph immediately looks a little bit better. It's stretched up and down to a more appropriate uh, y-axis. All right, and when we trace it, F3, we'll see right away that it's really graphing the same function. It goes up to plus a value of plus 1 for y, and over here will be a value of minus 1. So this is the sine function. Looks more like what you would see in a textbook. But notice that the tick marks here are also a little bit different. These tick marks are actually, it's hard for, you know, it'd be nice if the calculator had a better screen to actually write them down. But actually what has happened here is the calculator is putting a tick mark at pi over 2. So this is not 1 radian 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This is pi over 2. This is 2 pi over 2, which is pi. This is 3 pi over 2. This is 4 pi over 2, which is 2 pi. So this right here, going from 0 to 2 pi, represents one full cycle of the sine function because it goes from 0 to 2 pi radians, which is one time all the way around the unit circle. It begins to start over again. Same thing on the negative side. So it would be nice if the calculator had enough room here to put pi over 2 here, 2 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 4 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2, 6 pi over 2, 7 pi over 2, but it doesn't. 
So I'm telling you that here, and that way you'll know. Now when you trace it, which is what we're doing here, notice that at, when it finds the value uh, y equal 1, sine equal 1, the value we get is 1.5708. Now if you take pi and divide it by 2 in your calculator, you'll find out that pi over 2 is equal to 1.57, right? Now if we go over here, when we cross the axis again, that's about as close as we're going to get here, this is almost 0, then x is equal to pi. So we're at pi radians here, and so on. You could continue tracing around like that. So it's useful for you uh, so that when you're looking at this guy, you'll say, oh, this is pi over 2. This is 2 pi, you know, uh, this is 2 pi over here, or something like that. Now, you can actually um, graph anything you want. I mean, we've picked a simple function here. What if you wanted to graph sine of x plus, uh, let's wrap something in here. Let's do cosine of x uh, and let's you know let's square that guy that last guy so we'll square cosine x we'll make a little more complicated function now if we go back to the graph menu the same values of of uh, x and the same values of uh, of the scale basically are kept from the last graph so you don't really have to go to zoom trig uh, to, to, to invoke it because we just used it so you can see here the graph looks kind of weird because we're adding a square function on top of a sine function, but it's nice because you can look at it and say, okay, here's pi over 2. Here is pi, which is 2 pi over 2. Here's 3 pi over 2. Here's 4 pi over 2, which is 2 pi. And if you notice, this guy forms one cycle. We start up high, we go down, and we end up high again. So this forms one cycle of this function. So the period here is 2 pi. Now, just so you know, if you go back into Zoom standard number six, like if you uh, reboot your calculator or if you uh, just accidentally hit it, then this function is going to look not very pretty again. It's going to squish it vertically, hard to read everything, and the scale is going to be plus minus 10 again, so 1 radian, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. But if you get stuck, just go to the Zoom menu, go hit Zoom trig again, uh, and uh, it'll pop you back out into the proper mode. So it's useful for graphing trig functions and for tracing trig functions too because a lot of times when you're tracing a trig function and trying to find a value of it, a lot of times you're trying to find values at these anchor points around the unit circle. So if you're going to trace it, you might be interested in, you know, uh, uh, when uh, x is pi over uh, 2, what would the y value be? Now, it's a little bit hard here because we're zoomed out so far, but we could totally zoom in here, you know, and uh, we'll kind of take a look at what that point looks like. If we were interested in something around pi over 2, we could just regraph the function right there and uh, see what we have. So it's taking a little bit longer. It's filling in all of the extra points that we need. It's going to pop back up here in a second. And then when we go into the trace, we should be able to go over here. Let's hit trace. And we're looking for 1.57 because 1.57 is pi over 2. That's pretty close. There's 1.58, so the value is 1. Uh, and you could zoom in tighter and tighter and get a really exact value, but for a first order thing, that's, that's pretty good. Now what I want to do now is go and delete this function out. So let me clear it. Let me go back to the graph, and let me go and change it back to zoom standard because I want to show you something else here. So let's go to zoom standard plus minus 10. All right, most of the time in science and engineering, we're graphing functions, in, in, trig functions, and radians because that's what you just end up using a lot. But occasionally, it is really useful to graph something in degrees, in terms of degrees. In order to do that, there's two things you have to do. One is you have to change the calculator to degree mode so that when you evaluate your function, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be honoring the degrees that you want to be in. So you have to go to the mode menu. You have to go to the radian guy here, fly it out, select degree, hit enter enter again to make it selected. Now you know you're in degree mode, you know you're in function mode. So let's go back to y equals. Now let's graph, uh, at first let's do an elementary function. Let's do uh, cosine of x and close it off. Now if we just graph it like this with the standard zoom setting, let's see what happens. This looks nothing like a cosine at all. Uh, and if you pause the video and think about it for a second, you might realize the reason is because this tick mark is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I mean, if we look at the window menu, we're, our values along x is plus minus 10. Well, now those are 10 degrees. 
So this is this entire graph only spans 10 degrees this direction and then negative 10 degrees this direction. So remember, in terms of degrees, an entire circle is 360 degrees. So you've only graphed a tiny sliver of this graph because this is, uh, you know, this is only 10 degrees out of 360. So it looks pretty flat because you're really zoomed in super tight on this function. You're only graphing 10 degrees of it. So the way to get around that when you're doing degrees, it's better to handle this manually. Go into the menu here, and let's select. Uh, let's just do negative 360 degrees up to 360 degrees. So we have to give it a tick mark. We have to give it the boundaries that we want. Since we're in degrees, we want to use look at negative 360 for one whole cycle, positive 360 for another whole cycle. The scale of one being fine. Now the plus minus 10 is getting in our way because um, you know that sine only goes up to to plus minus one. So let's let's change it to negative two and positive two. So we'll be a little bit tighter on the action. Let's go back to the graph menu. And now we'll see a nice little cosine form, beautiful, just out of a textbook. All right, so it, we've got two cycles because we graphed negative 360 degrees all the way to positive 360 degrees. So here's one cycle here, here's another cycle over here. When we hit trace, F3, now our x value is all in terms of degrees. Here's 22 degrees, 31 degrees, 40, 50, 60, 90. When we get here, uh, this is going to be 90 degrees. If we zoomed in tight enough, this would be exactly 90 degrees. And then when we get over here, this guy is going to be at 180 degrees when we reach negative 1 here for the uh, cosine function. So that's really, really important uh, to know how to do. What you really need to do to pull that off is put your calculator in degree mode and then make sure and change your window to, to if you wanted, uh, what if you wanted two cycles? Maybe you wanted uh, 720 over on the right hand side. All right, and let's go ahead and change our function from cosine. Let's change it to, uh, uh, let's do tangent. Actually, we have to enter first. Let's do uh, tangent of x, and let's square the tangent function. So we'll hit enter. We have tangent of x squared. We'll go back to the graph, and let's see what happens. We had a nice little asymptotes forming everywhere, which the tangent function is full of asymptotes. And when we graph it, you'll see that the reason that it's kind of like off-center is because we graphed from negative 360 degrees over here all the way to 720 over here. So we have, you know, a lot more uh, action going on the right-hand side. That's just because of the, the value of the of the scale that we that we used. And we can, of course, go into the zoom menu and zoom in to any of the stuff that we want. If we want to look at this, just go ahead and hit a box, open it up. We want to check out how this guy intersects with the axis down here. Hit enter, and it'll go ahead and graph. There's the axis for us here, and here comes the function. It's coming down. It's going to just kiss the x-axis and come back up. We go ahead and hit trace, F3. We can look and see what's happening here. This looks like this uh, touching the axis here occurs right around 180 degrees. And you can just kind of play with it from there. So that's really, in a nutshell, what I wanted to show you. When you're graphing these trig functions, most of the time you're dealing in radian mode. All right, in radian mode. So if you if you're doing that, then go ahead and and put your function in. You're going to do a simple function like cosine or sine of x like this, sine of x. And you can put that guy on there and you could graph it till, you know, you're blue in the face and uh, you can do zoom trig to be able to get the right answer if you're doing uh, and that way you can get tick marks and pi over 2 pi 2 pi over 2 things like that along the x-axis if you really have to do it in degrees put your function in there put your calculator in degree mode change the window to give you enough horizontal axis in terms of 360 degrees and change the vertical axis to match and you can get these pretty graphs show up. So if you're in here and you're in degree mode and you don't want to edit it manually, you don't want to edit the window manually, if you go up here to zoom and you go to zoom trig and hit F7, then the calculator is going to graph it like this and it does its best to go ahead and give you a nice uh, X and Y scales in terms of, of degrees also. So if we go and do a trace here, we'll see where it over here, up at the top here is roughly 90 degrees if you zoomed in. This is roughly 180 degrees. This is roughly 270. If you zoomed in, you would see that. And this is 360 degrees. So here's one full cycle. So I guess the bottom line is using zoom trig is probably the easiest way in degree and radian mode to get a nice pretty looking trig function to look right. But you do have the option to go in here in the window menu, edit things, 
to your liking, make it look and get exactly the shape and size that you want, and uh, go from there. So using these guys, you'll be able to, tr to graph good trig functions and, uh, and be able to trace them and with a minimum of headache because a lot of times when you graph these trig functions with the standard zooms, you end up getting confused because you're thinking, why does it look weird? Why doesn't it look right? It doesn't even look like a sine function. So I hope that these tips here have given you uh, the knowledge to go ahead and use the right modes in the calculator. Zoom trig is your friend. I'm Jason with MathTutorDVD.com. Go ahead and play with it. Put some trig functions in here. They all look kind of neat. And uh, with Zoom trig, you should be able to, uh, to uh, be able to explore them and uh, learn how to use your calculator efficiently.